Praise the Lord. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the narrow way Christ for all nations. And our brother Zena David. Today's topic is God's protection over the believer's soul. God's protection over the believer's soul. It is good we look at this topic so that we will know how secured we are. A lot of people are believers and they are living in fear. The fear of, oh, am I sure I'm going to make it to heaven? Am I sure God is able to protect me? Am I sure that the power of God is going to lead me through? How am I sure that I'm not going to fall and will never rise again? Is there any need for me to continue to try? Why should I strive when I know my strength is not good enough and I know that God may give up on me I know these are questions that people have asked me and I try to encourage them that listen is it's not by human strength this message is gonna be in detail if we are unable to complete it next message we will try to complete it but let us pray first our God and Savior, thank you for every time we come to you, you speak to us, you direct our hearts. Spirit of the Lord, this is another moment for you to speak to us again. We ask that you distribute your word to us. Give us true understanding. Help us to follow you in sincerity. Thank you, Lord. May your word heal us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for All Nations. If you're watching on Facebook or any other platform, please try to follow us if you've not done so. And when you do, please turn on the notification bell so that you can receive notification whenever we post any video subsequent time. And please share this video with someone. Don't just watch it alone. I encourage you to share it with someone. And also like and comment so that Facebook, YouTube can recommend this video to other people. I also encourage you to support our ministry. Our card details are in the description box on our website, tnwcfan.org, and also on the screen. The Lord God Almighty will bless you as you do so, as you support us to continue our ministry and also to continue to fund a charity organization. The Lord God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's move on into the message of today. There are scriptures we need to be. Let's look at the test for today's message. The test, uh, we have a couple of scriptures. This one is John 16, 37 to 40. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which he had sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again on at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone we see at the sun and believe it on him may have everlasting life and i will raise him up at the last day look at verse 39 this is a father's will which had sent me that of all which he had given me I should lose nothing. So, listen, the salvific work of Christ, the plan of God's salvation does not just mean that it, it doesn't end with just saving you. It also includes leading you and guiding you through this dark world. And not just that alone. Even when you were dead, 
The plan of God's salvation includes raising your body. The death and hell will give up their dead. The sea will give up their dead. Those who died in the desert, in rivers, those who were consumed to arches by fire, will give up their death. Everything, every element will give up their death. Until the resurrection of the body, salvation is not complete. Until the body is saved, the work of salvation is not complete. After I've done some teaching on salvation, listen, salvation is in three phases. We have been saved when we receive Christ. We have been saved. We are saved. We are being saved as we continue to work out our salvation and with fear and trembling. We are being saved as we journey through this world. When our body shall resurrect the resurrection of the dead. When we experience it, then we our final we will receive our final salvation. We have been saved, we are being saved, and we shall be saved. That is our final salvation. When we shall stand in the bosom in the presence of the Lord and we receive our final welcome, which is a well done, good and faithful servant. So, before we come to Jesus Christ, the Father draws us. And whosoever comes to him, he will in no wise cast out. Let's look at John 17, 12 then 10 27 to 30 while i was in, while i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name those thou hast given give us me i have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled listen to this all those who were given to Jesus Christ, none of them was lost, except the son of perdition, Judas Iscariot. It was already written about him, and if you look at the life that he lived, you will know that this one is doomed. He actually deserves the use that he was used by Satan, because if you look at him, the Bible says he was a thief. So do not just see that, oh, this man, uh, it's been written about him that is going to betray Jesus Christ. Now, the question is, which life did he live? Did he live the opposite lifestyle? No. It was his lifestyle. He was unfaithful. This man was unfaithful. Even the very way he lived fulfills the scripture. We as believers, we are in the hands of Jesus Christ. He saves us. He did not just draw us to himself, but we should have this confidence that the very one who begins this great work in us is going to bring it to a glorious end. He will complete it. So there is no need. If there's no need to be worried, if the ones the father gave him, he was able to protect them and make sure that none was lost. Even at the very moment of his death, he was still protecting them. When he was arrested, he made sure that his disciples were not arrested. He willingly gave himself to be arrested. Remember that it was so difficult for these people, the soldiers, those who went to arrest Jesus to recognize him. And Judas Iscariot said, the one I'm going to kiss. Jesus made sure that he revealed himself. 
This is how much we are secured in his hands. He is a good shepherd. He gives his life for the sheep. Even now, he makes sure that he goes ahead of us to clear every obstacle that is capable of destroying us. Every temptation that is capable of making us to backslide, he removes it. The work of salvation is huge in the hands of God. And he makes sure that whosoever that cometh to him, he does not cast away, no matter how weak your strength is. He protects you. He makes sure that all the provision he has made, you receive them. He brings them before you and makes sure that everything, his provision, all that, all the arrangements he has made for your salvation are enough to pull you through. For his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us. So he has provided everything. There's no need to be afraid. Those of you who are afraid, those of you who think that God's power, God doesn't care enough. He doesn't care enough to save my soul from hell. Why do I even need to try when I know I will never be good enough? Listen, you do not understand the power of Christ. I did a video some time ago and I talked about how I almost backslide and how the power of God saw me through even in my weakest moments. Not just one moment, in my weakest moments. It is not of him that run it. It is not of him that will it. It is of God that showeth mercy. Nobody is going to enter heaven because they are so powerful, they are so strong. No. Salvation is a gift of eternal life. Through Christ Jesus. Salvation is in Christ. It is not because we merit it. It is a gift. We just need to believe. Let's continue reading. John 10, 27 to 30. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. Jesus, this is Jesus Christ talking. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. And neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Look at the boasting. Jesus Christ boasting. That these ones, you and I, that have been given to him, nobody, no Satan, no power can pluck them out of his hand. Not just that alone. He said, nobody can pluck them out of my father's hand. And he goes on to say, I and my father are one. This is how powerful it is. Nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. You are the apple of God's eye. You are embedded on the palm of God. You are engraved in his hand. Nobody can remove you. Nobody can peel you off his hand. You are the apple of God's eye. That is how secured you are. The security of the believer is so strong. These are some of the verses that those who believe in once saved, always saved, have misunderstood. They forget that the human being has something that is independent. That is the human will. You can make up your mind to stop following God. 
It is with a heart man believes, and he is saved. It is with the same heart man can disbelieve and say, I don't want you anymore. Remember what God said, I place before you life and death. Choose one, but I advise you to choose life. So we have this independent will, the human will, because God created man in his own image after the likeness of God. One of the likeness of God, one of the attributes of God is independent will. God does whatsoever thing he wants. So also we humans. We have independent will. We can choose between right or wrong. We can choose to follow God. We can choose not to follow God. We have this, and it is the most powerful thing that God has given to man. The most powerful thing. God, the most powerful gift God has given to man. The will, it is so powerful. But Satan took advantage of that gift and the ignorance of man and decided to use it against mankind. Let's continue. Philippians 1, 4 to 6. Always in my prayer, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. The day that Christ will raise up every dead. The day that Christ is going to come for the living and the dead. The day of judgment. The day of Christ. He who had begun this work in you, this good work in you, will perform it until the day of Christ. There's no need to be worried. Satan has a way of planting unbelief in the hearts of people. I don't know how I'm going to finish this message today, but if I can't finish it next week, I'm going to continue with it. Satan has a way of planting unbelief. So much unbelief in the hearts of God's children. And makes sure that he looks for one thing or the other to plant in their hearts and grow it. God is able to fulfill this same assignment he has given to himself. The assignment of, of our salvation. The work of our salvation. He is not going to lift it halfway. He is not going to leave it halfway. He is not going to say, I'm tired. I can't continue. So long as we are ready to follow. So long as we are ready to abide in him. And he abides in us. This work, Paul said he is confident. He said, he said, being confident of this very thing. Paul is so confident of this thing that the God who has begun this great work is going to complete it. Is going to finish it. Remember, we are purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ that saves us is precious. The blood of the eternal covenant. And God has made every arrangement. And he has made every provision for our salvation. Brethren, everything, every provision has been made. Look at what 2 Peter chapter 1 3 and 4 says, according as his divine power has given us all things. According as his divine power had given us, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given 
unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We that have escaped, his divine power had given us everything we need. Everything. He had made all provision for our salvation. We did not just escape. As we escape, as he pulled us out of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ, he has also made every arrangement and had given us every single thing we need for life and godliness. He had given us everything we need. Praise God. Every single provision has been made for us. Are you aware that before you were born, you had, you were predestined for salvation? The gospel of Jesus Christ did not even come to you by mistake. It was God's own arrangement. It was a deliberate act. Some of you were born in church. But I tell you the truth that the fact that you were born in church does not mean that salvation is automatic. A time came in your life, for those of you who are born again, that you had to receive the gospel officially. Receive the gospel for every child of God, even those who are born in church. Those who are born into Christianity. There is a day that comes in your life and you say, Today, I want to receive Christ as my personal Savior. Today, I want to be born again. Every child of God has this day. And that is the greatest day of your life. More than your best day. If you are born in this world, if you have been born into this world, you need to be born again so that you can have life eternal. If you are not born again, it means you will die again. After you die, you are going to die again. Now, there are some provisions and arrangements that God has made. These arrangements are about five of them. I just want to mention five of them. Number one, ownership and marking out. He owns us, he makes sure he owns us and he marks us out. Number two, anointing us and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the word of God, which is one of the most powerful provision that God has made. All these things I, I am mentioning, these are things that God put in place. These are provisions and abridgments that God himself have, uh, has made. So that those of us who have been called, who have been drawn and called by him and are saved, will be able to navigate our way through and be led into eternal life. I mean, into the paradise of God. Number four, angels, guardian angels especially. And then number five, warnings, corrections, commendations, and discipline. These are things that God has put in place. In course of this message, we're going to talk about how far can God go how far can he go in cost of securing a believer? How far can he go? Now let's look at some of these things. Number one, we're going to talk about ownership. Ownership and marking out. The church is ecclesia. 
which means they called out. We have been called out of the world. And not we were called out of the world to leave the world, but we are in the world, but not of the world. We are the called out. We are the chosen. Ephesians 1, 3, 1, chapter 1, verse 13, 4, 30, and Romans 8, 9. Let's read. Look at the screen. In who, Ephesians 1, 13. In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of the, of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believe, ye were sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise. Ye were sealed. After you heard the gospel of salvation. After you hear the word of truth. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Romans 8, 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, ye, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. We have something... That is called ownership. God owns us. He marked us. We have the mark of Christ. And this mark is a mark of ownership. So wherever we go, there is this mark on us. Don't touch on our forehead. We have been sealed as Christ's own. Remember what happened in Egypt. They killed the Passover lamb. And they have to mark their doorpost with it. Don't touch. This is God's own property. And when the angel of death passed through Egypt, when the angel of death was killing the firstborn of the Egyptians, those who were sealed by the blood of the Lamb, they were not touched. We as Christ's own, we are sealed. When demons see us, they tremble. When destruction see us, they pass over us. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. You as a child of God, you have been sealed. The seal of the Holy Spirit. The mark of ownership. We have the mark of ownership. We are not just saved, but Jesus Christ seals us with his blood. Those who are in the kingdom of darkness, they say that if you see a child of God, a true born again believer, there is a mark on their forehead. Don't touch. They belong to Jesus Christ. They are God's property. Let's move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. He doesn't just seal us, but he gives us the Holy Spirit, which is the next one we are going to talk about. The anointing of the Holy Spirit and the leadership of of the Holy Spirit. These are all provisions that God has made for us. Powerful provisions. 
powerful arrangements. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Every single thing we need had been provided for us. Every single thing he made arrangement for it. There is nothing he did not make arrangement for. Everything we need for life. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness. He had made everything provided for us. Every provision we need had been made. I, do you see God as somebody who will begin a project and leave it halfway? It's impossible. God will never, you are the project of God. For the fact that you are called, for the fact that you were called, means that God is going to complete this great work he has started in you. He will complete it. That's the truth. He has not called you to leave Egypt to kill you in the wilderness. Except it's your own choice. He has not called you to make you pass through the Red Sea. And then when you get to the middle of it, when you get halfway, he commands the water to break loose and cover you and swallow you. That is not God's plans for you. His plans for you are not plans of evil. They are not plans to disgrace you. Those of us who have proclaimed the good news. Those of us who are being mocked every now and then for his name's sake, he has a reward for us. If we do not get there, we will not get a reward. So God's plans for us is to do everything possible to make sure that he delivers us from every kind of evil and to bring us into eternal life listen until we get a hug from jesus and he tells us well done good and faithful servant the work of salvation is not complete how many of us have the whole of our minds fixed on heaven how many of us how many of us are already getting consumed by the thought of heaven. How many of us? Do you have heaven in view? Are you still struggling with, am I sure God is going to save me? Am I sure he's going to deliver me? Listen, I am an example. When I gave my life to Christ, I used to cry a lot because there were girls ready to come into my life to devour me. That is not an achievement. I gave my life to Christ in the 90s and in, I started backsliding and in the year 2000 I said, no, I must wake up again. I must rededicate my life. So I rededicated my life at one of the weakest moments of my life. And in those days, whenever I kneel down to pray, I will be crying. I will be saying, God, I love you, but I don't want to backslide. I have no strength and I don't want to backslide. Lord, please save me. Sometimes I could just kneel down and be crying and saying, Lord, I love you, but I have no strength. But this is me today. God saw me through. If I die today, by the grace of God, I'm going to heaven. I tell you the truth. It's not by power. I Since 2000, I, read, I rededicated my life to Christ. He has seen me through. Let me tell you one thing. Not one moment... Did I survive temptation by my own strength? 
because I've come to understand that by strength, no man prevails. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, as a young believer who was burning in, with zeal for Christ, when I see people backslide, I used to blame them that, how can you do that? How can you disobey God? How can you commit adultery? How can you commit fornication? How can you be a pastor when you do this? But listen, <laughs> I was only being childish. <laughs> Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You are not standing by your own power. That's the truth. It was after I faced temptation, even as a pastor, and I see myself falling, no strength, no power, but by just God's own mercy and grace, I escaped temptation. And I tell myself, oh, God, thank you. I can't give any credit to myself. It was when af after I saw moments like that, I really come to understand that it is not by strength, not by might. It is not by strength. It is not by might. If you see anybody boasting that I am standing because I am strong, it is a lie. I know we have our own role to play. But if you see anybody saying, I did it, I, made, I am making it because of my own strength. It is because, either because he's ignorant or because he's a hypocrite. Even as a man of God, I've seen moments in my life, not just one moment. I've seen moments in my life that I would have fallen. I mean, the kind of fall that you fall and you become dust. Like water pouring on the ground and nothing is left. You can scoop it. Devastation. Like you being you falling in I know God's grace is available, but I know some things are too disastrous for you to recover yourself. God has saved me from such. God has saved me from reproach. That no matter how much God uses you, people still refer to your past. God has saved me from that. And it wasn't because of my own strength. The same God can help you. Sometimes when you are proud... Sometimes when you are too proud, God has his own way of humbling you and letting you know that you don't need to take the glory. Neither do you need to share my glory with me. I am the Lord that is working through you. It is not your strength. It is not by your power. Brethren, God is able to see you through. God is able to lead you through. Just submit to him. Just give your life to him. You are safe in him. In him we have our being. In him we walk, in him we live, in him we have our being. Abide in him and let him abide in you. If you abide in the vine, he will never cast you away. And nobody will be able to pluck you out of the hand of God. Let me round off this message here by praying with you. Next week, we're going to continue from here. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your word. You have 
taught me in different ways through your word, through life experiences that it is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. It is of you that show it mercy. Some people are running so hard. But Satan is planting doubts in their hearts. Telling them, are you sure you're going to make it? You are suffering so much. What about this, your weakness? Are you sure you're going to enter heaven? Listen, the God that brought you into his kingdom is able to deal with that weakness in your life. Lord, help our unbelief. Lord, help your children. Lord, save your children from unbelief, from every doubt in the name of Jesus. You give me a revelation. 115 years in hell and the revelation of God's grace. That is a message you gave me. Oh Lord our God, you taught me how your grace works in the life of a believer. The revelation of God's grace. Father, please help us. Savior, help us. Help your children. Pull them through. Your children who support this ministry, who in their various churches are giving, working, some sweep the church, some do cleaning, some go for evangelism, some are prayer warriors interceding for the body of Christ. In any way and in every way, your children are laboring, even through persecution, endurance, in, in, in patience. Lord, help them to reap in the name of Jesus. Lord, save me from every temptation that is coming. Lord, please save me from every temptation. Pull me from every temptation. Brethren, please pray for me that God will save me from every impending temptation. Lord, please save me from every temptation. For the tempter is coming. Lord, save me. And after saving me, promote me. Bless us many that give to this ministry, Lord. Bless us many that support this ministry. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives as I pray for them on a daily basis. Lord, bless them on a daily basis. Open the windows of heaven for your children. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please share this message. And as I was praying, the Lord opened my eyes to see trials coming. Please pray for me. I specially request for prayers. Please pray for me. I need your prayers. I don't know why this message is coming now that I'm recording this video. Please pray for me. I need your prayers. Brethren, I need your prayers. Pray for me. Please share this video with someone and subscribe. I encourage you to give to our ministry. We have a lot of children on our charity organization. We are doing uh, training and skills acquisition. A program that is currently running. We need money to continue all these projects. Aged people we support the people who are lame, who have who have deformities, physical deformities that that project is on. We have a lot of projects that are currently on training and empowerment program. Please support us. Please support us. Whatever thing you give is well utilized. It's not just about this ministry. You can visit our website, hdfng.org, Hosanna David Foundation. Uh, visit our website and see. Go to our social media platform, Hosanna David, at Hosanna David NGO. You will see what we are doing. Please support 
our ministry so that we can do more. Uh, we don't just preach to people, we also need to touch the lives of these people. There are children who are into prostitution and doing all sort of crimes. Even some are doing drugs. I have seen a child of eight years old who is already doing drugs. Who was doing drugs? Eight years old. There were about eight of them. I had to go remove them from the street, rent an apartment for them. Um, there is a lady, a Christian woman, a young widow who is taking care of them. Please support us. The work is enormous. I'm not a money, money, money person, uh, but please support us. I, I can't eat this on the screen. There's a lot for us to do. Uh, I'm not among those who enrich themselves with the money. If you see the work we're doing, you will ask me, how do you have money to do all these things? Even though I don't preach money, please, if you let to give, Please support us. There's a lot in our hands to do right now. We are doing a lot. Please support us. God bless you. Please share this video with someone. Don't forget to tune in again. Don't forget to tune in. We also have in plans to start a weekly Bible study. Please subscribe and recommend this ministry to other people. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.